Good morning, everyone. Today I'm going to tell you about something that I've spent two years working on with a team that you would have thought already existed. Oh, I'm Jim Beaver with the Southwest Florida Regional Planning Council. Names up there. Um, and I work on all different kinds of projects involving conservation, wetlands, ecosystem services, climate change. And I'm going to tell you about putting together a unified conservation easement mapping and database for the state of Florida. And as I mentioned, you'd think something like this would have already existed. Because when people do a conservation easement to set aside land in some form of permanent preserve, you record it into the records of your local tax assessor, it's set up with an agency, and you'd figure you'd have this all together in one place. Well, it turns out that it was not. The National Estuary Program in, Co program in cooperation with the Regional Planning Council was funded by EPA to implement the project identify and map all the conservation easements in the state of Florida, the federal, state, regional, local government, private trusts and conservation organizations, corporations, and individually held conservation easements. At the beginning of the project, there was no complete map or database. And in fact, if you had a map for a particular area, the database might be inconsistent with another map of conservation easements in the adjacent county or region. So we want to address and rectify this. We put this into geographic information system layers, and we put a unified um, database metadata to go with it. The idea is to give a complete picture of all the conservation easements in the state of Florida, how they fit and interconnected the lands which were owned, the fee simple lands, and to help agency people know that, yeah, that property has a conservation easement on it when they're looking at it for somebody trying to make a land use change. Believe it or not, some people will try to develop a conservation easement land without telling the agency that they have one there. And it's up to the agency to figure out that that's the case, because they're not going to tell. So we completed this for all the lands which were already in the Florida Natural Areas Inventory, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. National Estuary Programs, the DEP, all of the water management districts in the state, um, the easements in 32 of the 67 Florida counties who do hold easements. Some counties refuse to hold easements for various reasons. And 13 of the 21 Florida land trusts hold easements. Others do not. So this is a, just to give you a view of how this fits together. This is a map in which the lands which are owned are in green, which are preserves of all different types and the conservation easements areas are shown in gold and how they can interconnect areas. In some place, cases, the entire riverine system will all be in a conservation easement connecting two conservation areas together. That's the case in the Estero Bay watershed, for example, along the um, uh, halfway creek system. So taking a look at this without the lands which are in cons that are permanent conservation, these are the conservation easements for the state of Florida as we have a map today as part of the project. So this way they look kind of scattered, but as you put in, go back to that other, you can see how they interconnect the existing conservation lands. So the Florida Natural Areas Inventory had this database already in place. This is self-reported. So in order for this to be in the FNAI database, the entity which held the easement had to tell the FNAI, the Florida Natural Areas Inventory, that they had this easement. There's no mandatory requirement that anyone do this. And it turns out a lot of entities don't. Um, the forms are um, somewhat involved. And sometimes, even if you report to um, FNAI, it doesn't get into the database for various reasons. Um, so looking at the federal land easements, I want to point out these are the U.S. Department of Agriculture and Department of Interior easements, which are held in permanent conservation easement. You can see that most of them are in the center of the state, and they're located typically in association with projects associated with this greater Everglades, and also with a large national wildlife area, which is being set up north of Lake Okeechobee. There's a proposal that goes along the Kissimmee River, uh, feeding into Lake Okeechobee that the uh, federal government's working on, which is going to be principally a conservation easement national wildlife uh, area. And um, these are only the ones that are permanent 
can't be developed, aren't being farmed. There are a whole bunch more that, I'm not, that we're not mapping in our project, which are temporary easements in which the federal government pays an agriculturalist to hold their land aside for a while, and then they may renew it, or if they choose to at the end of some time period, five, ten years, they can just go back and claim that land for agriculture or for other purposes. And we did not, there was no per reason to map these temporary easements in this project. There's no guarantee they'll be there. And in fact, I've seen in some of the counties in our region, it's very common that for a period, an area is held in a temporary easement and then it becomes a residential development or something later. Um, the conservation easements held by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection typically come in two types. These are areas which are mitigation banks that have been given to the DEP, or some of them are areas that have been um, purchased with funds in the past by Florida Forever, and the DEP was identified as the holder of the easement. As you can see, the concentration of these tends to be up in North Florida, though there are some more down in these areas. If the mitigation bank is already on public lands, it's not going to show as a conservation easement because it's already owned as fee simple. So this includes both things that show up as DEP and as trustees of the Internal Improvement Trust Fund, which is actually the state of Florida. The governor of the cabinet hit a gavel, they have a meeting, and then they're the trustees of the Internal Improvement Trust Fund. And this is basically the landowner of a, as the state of Florida. Individually, each water management district holds easements. Several of these are established as regulatory purposes. They are set aside as mitigation for some development project. In some districts, there's an affirmative program to try to protect watersheds. So they will use e conservation easements to protect the watershed, allow the activities to continue in that, in some cases put them in permanent preservation. So in Northwest Florida, you can see they tend to follow along watersheds and riverine systems. The Sewanee's got a very active program that goes around the Sewanee River Basin, some rather extensive acreage. Uh, St. John's was very active um, before its um, leadership changes and was working very hard along a whole system that ran parallel to the Atlantic coast and also some different watershed systems. Southwest Florida was the most active of all the water magic districts in these programs. And they had a strong program um, protecting the green swamp and a number of other systems. Some of these um, more extensive easements in the more developed areas, like this one here, the Saranoa, was mitigation for a turnpike. So you had whole areas that were proposed to be developed, which were set aside in permanent conservation, providing habitat for scrub jay, black bear, and other species. South Florida's um, tend to um, be on the coast, and they tend to be mostly regulatory and associate with projects permitted by them, but there's also a cluster you can see up in the um, Orlando, Orange County area. When we take a look at all of the water management district lands and the easements, south or the water management districts hold much more conservation easement area than the Department of Environmental Protection. Putting all those together, the federal, the state, this will give you a view of the conservation easements of the state of Florida. In this one, we also did a hollow outline of what the Florida Natural Areas Inventory had. And as you can see, there were areas of easements, even by these state entities, that had not yet been picked up by the Florida Natural Areas Inventory that we picked up in the course of our project. We also looked at local government uh, held easements. And these often occur as a result of regulatory activities and also sometimes places where the local government decided in their comprehensive planning that an area that had been permitted for development really shouldn't be, such as the Cape Hayes Peninsula in Charlotte County. So here it is for Charlotte County. They also include easements which have been set aside in this county for Florida Scrub Jay. Lee County has extensive easements. The biggest one was done out in this area as mitigation for the expansion of the Southwest Florida Regional Interna International Airport. And um, so that's a very big area for panther habitat, black bear. There's uh, all kinds of wading birds and wood stork that use it. 
but also you'll see them along the coast at Bunch Beach in the San Carlos Bay, in areas on Matt Lachey Pass, and all around Charlotte Harbor. So Lee County had a very active uh, holding program for conservation easements. Manatee County uh, has been picking up easements within their watershed, particularly pr protecting their drinking water region, and some in coastal areas associated with estuary programs up there. Uh, Polk County's got very extensive easements. Uh, most of it's associated with past phosphate mining. And a lot of this occurs when uh, phosphate mines are setting aside land not to be uh, mined, or areas which, after they've been restored, have, under the permit, been established to go into easement. And often these are then held by the county in, in easement for uh, protection. Several of these have been uh, also put into secondary use as um, recreation areas. Sarasota has some extensive ones. The biggest is the Longino Ranch area in the Mayaka River watershed, um, which is still uh, operating, but at the same time providing valuable habitat, um, which is, feel, feeds into the Mayaka River Basin and Charlotte Harbor. So if we take a look at all the counties, I was just showing you the counties within the NEP. These are all the conservation easements that exist in the state of Florida that are held by counties. And you can see up in the St. John's area, it's rather extensive. And it doesn't, all those counties I showed you close up for Lee, they almost disappear at that scale. Overall, we have mapped 9,000 conservation easements in the state of Florida. Uh, it comes out to about 800,000 acres. Um, many of them are very small, and our smallest ones were down to a half acre individual parcel. The, um, Individual holdings of conservation easements by land trust also tend to be small. The most active are up here in North Florida in the Red Hills area. And we do have some in the center state along the ridge. They're picking up valuable scrublands. And there are actually ones here on the coast too. But the size of the parcels are so small, at this scale of the state of Florida, they're not showing up very clearly to you. But the nice thing about our GIS mapping is you can zoom as far in as you want to, and you can get down to that half acre um, scale very easily. So if you put in all of the ones I mentioned earlier, the government ones, with the private easements, this now gives you a broken down view of the conservation easements in the state of Florida. And then again, back how they interconnect with the conservation lands. Uh, we'll be completing this project at the end of the month. The final maps um, are being delivered to the Florida National Area's inventory, so they'll be able to post it at their website. And all of you and anyone who wants to can take a look at them and download the maps and put them into your GIS system as is needed. I will tell you that conservation easements are as good as their enforcement. And the larger ones that I did have a chance to look at in the course of the project are being well maintained, but it's not clear and all the smaller ones that definitely have a management entity looking at them now because the level of compliance by the uh, holders of the easement has been decreasing as the amount of staff available or individuals available to look at these sites has also declined. So what we are not doing in this project, we're not doing temporary easements. We're not doing rural land stewardship areas which continue to be active in crops, citrus, and improved pastures. That's mostly in uh, Collier County. We're not using, we're not mapping any of the proposed easements which haven't been done because quite frankly, the rate of an easement actually being completed and filed is not 100%, um, it's far from it. Um, current conditions of easements are not in this study. We did not have the, we were not given the funding or the time to go visit um, 9,000 easements in the state of Florida to see if they were being maintained. So the final product will be the map, the metadata, and a tool that will let you do queries. So you can say, where are all the easements that have mangroves? And it'll, take, it'll show you that on the map. Where are the all easements which have Zurich Oak Scrub? It'll take you to that. And so that'll be um, useful also if FNEI posts that up on their site. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Hi, Jim. Um, if you know of a conservation easement that may not be included, what should somebody do? Uh, let me know about it and um, provide it to me um, with some information, 
and we'll see if it's in our database, and if it's not, and if it's not been previously mapped, we'll map it. Thank you very much. I did not mention my presentation, but for a couple land trusts that didn't have GIS capabilities, we took their information and mapped it and then gave them the GIS maps so that they would have them. Jim, do you know if FNAI plans to incorporate this in their existing Florida managed areas map, or will it be a second map that you can use in relationship with the um, existing owned areas? You know, sometimes uh, on a managed area, one entity will own the property, it'll be under their fee title, but there'll be a separate conservation e uh, easement to another agency. What I know is we're going to give the information to the FNAI. So they'll have these maps, which they can incorporate into their overall state map. Um, they can show them as individual maps or, or have them in any way they want to. We're, we're keeping a copy, of course. Um, I would expect them to put it into their statewide mapping. Um, quite frankly, it's rare. We, we only found a few where one governmental entity owned the property and another governmental entity had an easement over it. And typically that's military bases. So we'll have the U.S. Air Force and the Panhandle own the property and the Water Management District have an easement on some conservation area they set aside. Hi, Jim. Um, is there a push or is there a plan to update this map every three years, every five years, because at some point it will, your project, while it's valid today, at some point it will need updating. Is there recurring funding or something that we can rely on to make sure these maps continue to be accurate? We do not have funding to continue to update this on some periodic basis. FNAI is funded to maintain these databases. So it would be a question for them as to whether they would take the time to continue to update it. I expect they'll continue to post data which is reported to them, but um, it may be necessary at some point um, for them to go out and search the databases. Because it does turn out that not everybody, as I mentioned, not everybody is going to report to them. Some of the easement holders don't even know that FNAI exists. And we have to also watch with the maps um, for many of the counties, they would send me a map of their conservation easements, and it wouldn't just be conservation easements. It would be utility easements, it would be schools, it would be other sites, and we, had, we pulled those out, so we only showed conservation easements. So they may be getting reports to FNAI saying this is a conservation easement when, in fact, it's a power line. Okay. We put an agri we, we did include an area where agricultural practices were going on, where the easement was permanent and it was set aside in perpetuity for conservation purposes. So a level of agriculture had been determined as being compatible with that conservation. We did not do it for the, if, if you'll, I don't know if I can back up here, is there a way to do that? Yeah. We did not do it for one category of agricultural easement that's supposedly permanent, and that's the rural land stewardship receiving areas. And the issue with that is that rural land stewardship easements, um, they describe as being a layer cake. So there's the rights on the property of different levels. So they can sell an easement that just says, we're never going to develop this for residential, industrial, commercial, but we can do blasted earth row crops and reservoirs and have no other function on that and it's not necessarily for conservation. So it's, an e it's a use easement but not a conservation easement. Um, if the rural land stewardship could parse out what was permanently conservation from these, then we could include that subset. That looks like I'm done. Thank you. <laughs>